uh, moving on to uh, we've got an, an AI story. Uh, Brainchip is back again with the latest generation of their Akita AI engine. Second gen offering provides performance increases while simultaneously offering more energy efficiency. That includes a new low power mode that can be run on edge computing devices for specific workloads. Akita V2 is focused on providing enhancements for time series data processing and vision processing. Tom, what advantage does the newest AI platform offer? Well, for one thing, it is no longer a one size fits all solution. And I think that was one of the drawbacks of their generation one, if you could call it that is, you know, it's like uh, the old Henry Ford model, you know, you can buy any color you want as long as it's black. Well, they had one model that kind of ran on, you know, a specific kind of hardware, which is what you would expect from a company that's kind of just starting out. But as they've kind of developed this technology, one of the things is, is that they've offered three separate kinds of models. You know, they have a lower power one that can run on edge IoT devices. They have a slightly better one that can run, you know, kind of what with the existing one. And then they kind of have like a superset that can run multi-cores, multi-cluster. And, and that's something that you're going to need in the environment where you're starting to throw bigger and bigger workloads at it. I think that this is, you know, kind of one of those things where you're you're trapped in a way because, you know, um, AI uh, devices, AI hardware, yeah, whatever it is, you can throw stuff at it all day long and it will absolutely eat everything you send its way. But you also want to have the ability to take advantage of that distributed computer um, mentality, especially with things like IoT devices. And that was one of the things that, that Brainchip actually called out in their briefing was that, you know, with this lower power, power model, maybe you're not doing like really complicated computations there at the edge, but by offering that low power, low compute cycle type model, you can do some work and then ship it back and have it done, you know, in a different place. And I think that that's going to allow people who are heavily invested in those kinds of edge nodes to really take advantage of this solution. I know that Brainship has a lot of fans out there that are really excited to see where this technology is going to go. I mean, they're uh, in the announcement, they talked about, you know, dealing a lot with time series data. And I know that that's one thing that AI struggles with. It's not enough to be able to analyze the data and make decisions about it, you know, hours or, you know, even days from now. Can you do that in real time or near real time? Because I can tell you as someone who works in, say, some like security space, I don't need to know how an attacker was moving laterally a week ago. If they're doing it now, I need to see what AI projection says that I need to do to be able to lock that down so that I can stop them before they get access to something that they're not supposed to get to. And I end up on the news in a very uncomfortable interview with somebody. So I think that that's really something that's going to be helpful in the future. And one of the nice things is when you see how Brainship went from that one one model for your workloads to this more distributed, more, um, I don't know, um, more sized model. I think that ultimately it's going to be a, a bigger win for everybody because it gives you the capability to kind of tailor what you're doing instead of just saying, all right, well, you know, we have something that needs this. We can't use this company because they, they can't run on our hardware or we need way more than they can offer. So I, I'm I'm hopeful as to you know how the market is going to receive this, but also how developers are going to adjust to it and be able to write their software and make it more advantageous for those out there who want to consume it. I mean, Chris, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean the the move towards the the more t-shirt sizing and being able to to bring it down. I mean, it, it definitely expands their customer bases it, uh, and the use cases that that you can put against it. So uh, I think. And anytime you give the customer more options up to a certain point, um, it is uh, is always a good thing. And I, I think they'll they'll probably see some more people interested in and and trying it out and uh, and seeing what it's all about. 